Welcome to New Life Live, the premier place to receive free advice from Christian psychologists and counselors for the mental, emotional, relational, and spiritual challenges you face. Since 1988, we've offered compassionate responses that combine God's truth with proven psychological principles to guide you toward healing. Our phone lines are open. Call us now at 1-800-229-3000. Hello, everybody. I am so glad that you joined us today. It's Becky Brown. I am a licensed marriage. Oh, I'm not a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm already kicking it off wrong. <laughs> I am a <laughs> licensed clinical counselor, and I'm joined by Dr. Alice Benton, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist. And we are also going to be joined by Stacy Smith, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist. She's um, Ironically, they just had a fire alarm go off in her office. So we're going to wait till those those uh, noises go away. <laughs> but, you know, isn't that just like it is all the time? We're going to take callers today, 1-800-229-3000. We want to talk with you. We've got some calls coming in. And, you know, uh, one of the things I know that we were going to talk about is um, the devastation that so many people are experiencing mm-hmm. because of the hurricane, the one that's coming and the one that just went through. And, you know, it's kind of um, in- interesting that an alarm would be going off where uh, Stacy is. But, you know, a lot of times in our life, um, we have these major storms that disrupt everything in our life and the things that um, are, are normal creature comforts, everything from drinking water to electricity to food, shelter gets taken from us. And we are praying for the people that are in the path as well as the ones that are struggling. You know, Alice, I'm sure now in California, you don't have hurricanes necessarily, Mm -hmm. you got earthquakes, but anxiety is created by these disruptions in our day-to-day life. What would you say to somebody who may be struggling with anxiety about whether, whether they're watching it you know, out, you know, because people get glued to the to the story about the storms, or maybe it's it's something they're experiencing. Well, Becky, our new life groups span the country. And so in one group, we have a member who lives in Florida and we have members here in California. And the prayer alert system was activated for mm-hmm. our member who is in Florida. And there's ongoing conversation within the group about the safety, sending prayers back and forth, and leaning into relationship and getting emotional and spiritual support. Activating the body of Christ is one mm-hmm. of the most powerful ways to counter anxiety. We need those touch points. We need people that we can decompress with, cry with, rage with, and be reminded of God's truths and also be God's hands and feet to one another, whether that's um, sharing finances, making meals for one another. Community, safe spiritual community is the answer to so many of life's problems and particularly for anxiety. It's really true. Um, it, It also is the way that we can carry each other's burdens, right? When we're talking about the things that are, that some people are struggling with. I also have a a group chat that we've been talking about this today because some of them live there, but also just lifting each other up in prayer. And there's so much help and aid that's going out. We see the need for people, for their physical needs. And I also, my heart goes out from an emotional standpoint. I've known people who have been trauma care um, providers in these types of situations. This is a traumatic event. It can be traumatic even if you're watching it from afar, you know, because we we feel the power of nature coming, you know, at us. And the things that we put our life on have been threatened. Our families, I just read about a loss of a family, like literally the whole family was wiped out in this previous hurricane. And And it touches into our own grief. However this hits you today, whether you are sheltering in place, whether you have made um, the move to go somewhere, or maybe you have just come through a storm that's not related to the weather. We're here for you. Mm -hmm. We're praying for you and we can help you if you need help. Um, Just give us a call 1-800-229-3000. When we come back from this break, we'll have Stacy on with us and uh, we're going to answer some calls and help some people today and you might be one of them. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be right back. 
New Life Ministries saved my completely broken marriage. No matter how much hurt you've had to face, no marriage is beyond hope. At New Life Ministries Intimacy and Marriage Weekend, licensed counselors will help you rebuild communication skills and renew your commitment to each other. You're building authentic intimacy and you're learning how to connect on an emotional and relational level. You're learning how to listen. You're learning how to identify those core patterns that get in the way of good relationship. The Intimacy and Marriage Weekend is October 25th through the 27th in Dallas, Texas. Register online at newlife.com or call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and use the discount code NLL to save $50. 1-800-639-5433. Three and a half years later, we're still going strong. I would encourage anybody who's struggling in their marriage to go. They are more effective than anything else we tried. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. We are so grateful that you joined us today. You can call us at 1-800-229-3000. We're taking calls and we've got some lined up. You know, uh, one of the things that we love about connecting with you is that we have great resources for you and your journey. And we're, we're here for you. We've been around for 36 years. We hope to get going into the next 36. And so I just want you to connect with us. And we're going to go to our first caller, and it's Zach calling us from Ventura, California. Listen's on KDAR. Hi, Zach. Thanks so much for calling. How can we help you today? Yes, hello. Thank you for taking my call. We also get uh, fires out here besides earthquakes, too, in mm-hmm. California. Oh, yes. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. how can we help you today, um, Zach? Yes, yeah, so... I'm uh, 32 years old, and I've recently just started dating this new um, woman. She's my age, too. She's a believer in the faith. She grew up Catholic, but she's been in the faith now two years. I grew up in the church, but I haven't become serious about it since the past year. And before that, I was in a lot of different relationships that were not in accordance with God. Um, You know, sex outside of marriage. Um, I did cheat once in the past, and, you know, it really separated me from God, I feel. And I've worked on that, and I've been doing what I need to do, daily devotionals, changing my thought patterns, all this, but I'm terrified, and I get very emotional about this. I might get emotional, I'm sorry. Is this, this woman I'm talking to now, she's beautiful, both inward and outward, and, you know, she's, you know, she's a fellow, or she's a fellow believer in the faith, and I'm just terrified that I'm going to mess up again, or hurt her, or one day I'm going to have to tell her everything I've done in the past. And that really terrifies me, because I don't know if she's going to just run, and maybe she should run. I don't blame her, but it's just the fear is there, and I don't know what exactly to do, if I should just walk away now, or who knows. Mm. Zach, I love that you're asking this question. It is it's wonderful, and you got some great uh, insight, but uh, we've got Stacy back, thank God. Uh, Stacy, um, you heard Zach's question. How would you yeah. start this response? Well, um, I'm just, I just want to just applaud Zach for his work and to say, you know, this is such a great question. How do I show up when I'm imperfect in a relationship? And my question and my answer to you is show up imperfectly. Show up the way you are and you'll find out. Um, what I love about New Life is we're all people on the journey. We're all people somewhere in our recovery story. And, you know, I really appreciate people that can bring their authenticity and live a life of recovery. So this young lady that you're dating and seeing, if she can't take your story and your authenticity, then what does that say about the future of the relationship? She gets to choose. Um, I would hate for you to leave her or ghost her Mm -hmm. or abandon the relationship without helping her understand what it is that you're running from or why you're running. And I don't know that you can ever be perfect enough uh, to to be what you want to be, to be in relationship, but you, but coming honestly and humbly in relationship and saying, hey, this is, this is who I am. Um, will you accept it? Um, that's how we come to say, you know, like this is a struggle of mine and here are the things that I'm doing to be better. What do you think about those things? It starts a relationship off on a really good, authentic, recovery-oriented level. 
and just see what she's got to say about it. I love that. You know, it reminds me what you just said, Stacey, reminds me of how many couples that we've helped through betrayal and recovery and how close they are after the healing work has been done. Alice, what would you say to Zach about this? Zach, we are so proud of your humility and the kind of person who knows he's imperfect is doing the work to change and is willing to talk about it. That is great material for a spouse who will be able to go the distance in marriage and handle the ups and downs and the difficulties. So I actually think your honesty and what you have done and will do about it, it makes you even a more attractive as a spouse if you keep in the work. Because everybody's imperfect, but few of us are willing to talk about it and make action to change our imperfections. And the beauty of recovery The groups that are willing to lead with, hi, I'm Alice and I'm an addict. I'm Alice and I'm a liar. I'm Alice and I have a a past of a lack of sexual integrity. Those groups start with that confession and that admission. They get it right out on the table. And I want you to keep practicing as you've done with us today on this show so that it becomes something that you don't feel so ashamed and so embarrassed to share. You're already willing to push past that. I think I heard you say one day I might have to tell her and I want that to strengthen and I am willing to tell anybody that I date about this at the right point in the relationship but I will absolutely tell because you know the value of that level of humble confession so I heard in the work you've done that you have reunited with your faith and you're doing devotionals I think you may not yet have done structured recovery where you're getting with other men who are willing to confess this too is that right that you haven't yet done that part of it not yet. I'm looking for groups, though. Oh, well, you've come to the right place. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tell them, yeah. Becky. I mean, Zach, we have Every Man's Battle Intensive, and we're going to be in Orange County November 1st. And I would implore you to get there because your healing has just begun. Um, we're going to send you a copy of Worthy of Her Trust as well. But, Zach, that's what Alice is talking about. Alice, I cut you off because I was so excited. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add more to that? (laughs) Well, I I want you to get active in a group like that and get stable in being able to openly confess, probably before you share with this woman that you're dating, so that you can start with, I'm in a men's group, I've gone to every man's battle, and I'm going to tell you why I've done these things. You can start with headlines early on in a relationship. You don't have to go into the details yet, but being prepared to tell her the actions you're taking is the best lead into a tough conversation like this. This is really difficult. And we women, we should know to ask, tell me about your history with pornography. Tell me about your history with sexual activity. And sadly, Zach, these aren't questions most of us know to ask and answer, but you're becoming a man prepared to do so. Yes, that's so true. Stacey, any last comments that you want to make to Zach? No, I just think it's it's really awesome to start that conversation that way because it's just sets the tone for the whole entire relationship and maybe even marriage. And uh, after dating, me dating for 10 years um, between my marriages, um, I had to ask those hard questions, like what is your relationship with pornography, and be able to tell my history and uh, to be able to say what I was doing to be in a different place. And I learned so much about myself and I'm excited for the journey that you will be going on to learn about yourself and be able to share it with others. Mm -hmm. I agree, Terry. I need your help with the call screener, but we are gonna send Zach a copy of uh, Worthy of Her Trust. Mm -hmm. And hold on, Zach, and we'll get you connected with some information about Every Man's Battle. We're gonna be right there in your area and it would just be a great way for you to Um, begin this journey. We're so grateful that you called. We're going to go back to the calls. We're going to talk with Loretta, who's calling us from Adelphi, Maryland, and listens on WAVA. Hello, Loretta. Thanks for calling. How can we help you today? Um, I called because yesterday uh, there was a show on, and the fellow that I talked to said that I should talk to your show. Um, I was explaining to him, um, I've been married for 35 years. And I have not really been happy, not a great amount of happiness through this whole marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, I've even, after I got married, I got into the hoarding situation. I'm into that. Um, When I was five years old, I was burned over 75% of my body. I think a lot of trauma and PTSD is coming up. And we had a marriage counselor that we got. I finally found somebody that I thought could help us. 
We had three sessions with her. On the third session, she told me that she wouldn't be able to see us anymore. She didn't think she could help us. She she didn't think my husband was ready. And the thing is, is that she even drew up a family tree for us that was um, three generations back to show us, you know, where things happen that cause things that are happening to us. And I'm, I'm just... You know, I've tried to get help from my husband. I've called, like, John Hopkins Hospital. Nobody does the diagnosis for autism, and I think that I'm having trouble dealing with him. I have my own, like my daughter says, you were two broken people that came together, and you're struggling with trying to help each other, and you can't. So you Mm -hmm. fight and argue all the time. And I'm just, you know, I'm just not happy. I'm just. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm saved. I've been saved since I was young. I never got my first therapy until I was 19 years old. I ended up in the hospital in the psych ward. Mm. I'm a mess. I don't know. Mm. I don't know which way to turn. I'm at a point now where I don't know. I've tried to find somebody to help me with the hoarding situation. That didn't work out. There was a psychologist, but it, it just, I don't think that it, it, it just didn't really work out. Loretta, we're so glad that you called today. We are glad that you called. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, let's see what Alice has to say. Let's start with Alice, and we'll go to Stacy and get you um, some just some direction. I love that you're asking, though. It's it's that's a really good sign. Loretta, when you have tried multiple forms of treatment and didn't find much success or one counselor said she couldn't help you, it is so disheartening and very difficult to continue to make more attempts. I spoke with a woman once, Loretta, who had tried over 17 therapists and for a variety of reasons, none of them worked out. And so uh, the temptation to give up must be heavy and yet you're still calling and looking. And so I want to honor the fact that you are persevering, even though you haven't gotten satisfactory improvement or satisfactory help. And as you, I think you suspect your husband has autism, uh, but you haven't been able to get a diagnosis for it. And and is it because he may struggle to interact with you emotionally and to understand and consider your emotions? Is that why? Yes. And a lot of it is he watches the same TV shows over and over. He's very if I ask him to do something and he's doing something, oh, it just, you know, if I break his cycle, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's like, it's like you know, the floodgates open of his, his body language, his anger, you know. He's got a lot of anger, a lot of resentment, I think. He was, he was um, his parents were 40 when they had him. He's an only child. We, we even went to school together. I met him 10 years later at a, at a reunion, school reunion. And, and, and he, Loretta, um, Loretta, hearing that he has such anger, and it, and, and it may be connected with he's got these compulsive behaviors, he doesn't want you to interrupt them, uh, but tell me, is the anger related towards any major rupture that's taken place in your relationship? It probably is, because I, I, I have a hard time dealing with, this, with him sometimes. I just, you know, and it's like, I mean, we don't even really, we haven't really interacted you know, to really be, I guess, kind to each other for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. And and like, since 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 the therapist there. since the therapist said she wouldn't help you or couldn't help you couldn't help you, um, are you and your husband still willing to try again with another clinician? Yes. Okay. And so what because then? She told me to. What, what then is your he, question? He what, what, I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt. I'll interrupt, Laura, but you can, you can add more in a moment. What okay. then is your question for us today? How best can we help you? Well, I need to find somebody in the area that's not only, see, she said that we should get pastoral counseling, but I knew that wasn't the route to go because I've, you know, I've been there and done that. Yeah. Well, and Loretta, we can, we can definitely we get you. We need the spiritual, we need the spiritual, emotional, physical, okay. the whole thing, not yeah, just one we, part. We can definitely do that. Stacey, I'm going to give you a chance to talk before we go to the break. What would you suggest? We will get you some help, Loretta. Yeah, I think that the first thing we have to do is get a level of diagnosis and assessment of what is truly going on. And pastoral counseling is supportive, but it doesn't do that. So I think a very good psychological evaluation 
that rules out personality disorders. Um, sometimes things masquerade as um, an autism, being on the autism spectrum, like OCPD, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, that's not OCD. But um, we need a good um, diagnosis, a good diagnostic evaluation that covers all kinds of areas of assessment for you and for him. Um, to deal with trauma and then get you in touch. Join the New Life family. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And you can call that number a lot. If one therapist doesn't work, we'll find you another one because healing happens in community and we can connect you with the people that can really help you. And we will do that. Loretta, hold on. I'm going to send you a copy of How People Grow and we'll get you connected with the therapist. And we're so grateful. It's hard to find good help. Mm -hmm. I love what you said, Alice, about, you know, sometimes it is 17, but Mm -hmm. it's worth going to the 18th one if that's where the answer is we will help you we'll be right back after this break before coming to this weekend i have been dealing with the guilt and shame of an abortion that i had 20 years ago and we have three awesome kids but every time i kept getting close to the lord kids saying to me you're the best mom that voice in the back said you're a horrible mother look what you did to that child you killed somebody You don't deserve any of this, and you're not worthy. To help free me from my guilt and see that I would not make the same decision today, I would make a different decision, and I am a great mom, and God can use me. This is Steve Arterburn, and this is the story of a new life. After 20 years of guilt and shame, she attended a workshop and now is free. You can be part of offering hope to others as you step out in faith by donating to New Life Ministries. To make your tax-deductible gift, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE or visit newlife.com and click donate. I was sort of vaguely familiar that the 12 steps had some origination in the Bible. I found life recovery. And one of the things I liked so much was that it had such a broad appeal. It wasn't limited to just alcohol or drugs, that it was addressing a, a wide range of problems. At New Life, we believe everyone can benefit from a life recovery experience. There are life recovery groups all over the country. They take place online, in conference calls, and in person. And if there isn't one in your area, we can help you start one. We have startup materials, leader's guides, CDs, Bibles, and more, all with discounts available for groups. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and ask for Terry Ward. The 12 Steps have long been a great help to people in recovery because much of the 12 Steps power comes from the fact that they capture principles clearly revealed in the Bible. The 12 Steps is really a pattern for all of us as Christians. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. You know, I just want to say a shout out to our ministry service representatives for all the work they do. We are, uh, this is Friday of Customer Service Week, and I know I've heard from so many of you who are so grateful to have a real live person who will answer the call. When you call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, you get a real live person, and they will help you get to the help that you need. They also pray with people, and it's just a great way for us to help you get the help in your part of the world. Um, You don't have to struggle alone. And I just want to say thank you to all of our ministry service service representatives. We're so grateful. Um, And one more promo, you know, we got Restore coming up right around the corner, November 1st in Washington, DC. Stacy, you're one of our speakers there. And uh, you know, there's a lot of excuses that women will have to when they make the choice to not go to Restore. And I would say, of course I would tell them to go, but what would you say to someone who has heard about the intensive, has the struggle of betrayal trauma and this brokenness, what would you say to that person who is debating about whether they should go? I would say to them, you're worth it. You're worth it and your family is worth it because what will happen when you come is you will get love and care like you've never gotten before and understanding people who have been there and get it. And what we'll send you home with is an empowered spirit to make huge changes in the family dynamic, 
because when you change, the whole family changes. This could put you on a trajectory toward healing, and you're worth it, and your family is worth it. So come experience it and be with people and get loved on. I couldn't agree more. You can find out more about that at newlife.com forward slash restore, or you can refer back to what I just said. You can call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE, and we have a great uh, ministry team that will answer all your questions and get you registered, get you connected. We're going to go back to the calls, and we're going to talk with Randy, who's calling us from North Hollywood, California. It listens on KKLA. Yes. Hello, Randy. Thanks so much for calling. How can we help you today? Okay. Um, I talked to the whatever first first person. Um, okay, um, I, I in being quiet, uh, trying to meditate and be quiet. I realized for me everything is being in control or being out of control. And right now, I feel totally out of control. And to me. My God, my idea of God has, he has betrayed me. He's brought me too many things that I can't work through. Mm -hmm. And I'm at the point of no hope. Mm -hmm. And um, business has changed. And er everything to me in my world is um, my selling, I sell antiques to dealers. That's all. That's all I base my worth on is mm. how well I do in business, and otherwise, I'm nothing. And so since business has changed, um, I I feel worthless, and I've got people treating me like mm. a, a nuisance. Uh, I'm well, the bad guy. Randy, I'm so glad that you mm. called. I hear the desperation in your voice. Stacy. let's start with you. How can we help Randy? Well, you know, that's Randy, what I'd like to I know how so you glad. can help. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do right and now. We're going to we're going to start you on a journey, Randy. Um, just but but there's not going to be a magic fix. There's not going to be just a, a switch we flip. It will be a series of things that you can do to start figuring out your purpose apart from what you do. First of all, I want to just say um, it took courage to make the call, and that's the very first step, is to say, hey, um, right now everything feels completely out of control. And when when you feel like God has betrayed you, that is a really lonely, empty place. Mm -hmm. Because if we um, rely on God to be a comfort and a firm foundation for us, but yet trauma and things that have happened, you said he's let, he's betrayed me, he's let so many things happen. Um, we have to deal with that first. I mean, or is there is no foundation to go to. So I really would like you to get with someone who understands and who can just listen, um, because God and, um, and, and can take your anger, he can take your accusation. Uh, some of my greatest healing came through a very angry letter that I wrote to God and realized through that um, some things that I was understanding that I was understanding wrong. And that happens so frequently when life comes at us and we have trauma in life. So I would love for you to be able to walk with someone through it. I hear a lot of depression in your voice. I feel a lot of um, hopelessness in your voice. And so there may need need to be a need for medication. And, um, and it really can lift your spirits enough to start seeing light again and start seeing hope again. So I would start with a therapist that can lead you to someone that can help you with maybe some medication or at least evaluate you to see if you need it. Um, and eventually, we want to be able to base our lives on something that is solid, um, on our identity in Christ, who we are in Christ. And again, until you deal with that spiritual trauma of trusting God, you can't go there. And I get that. Right. Um, so I would I want you to work through that. Other people are going to be key in that. If you stay isolated, it's not going to happen. So get connected um, either in a group or in addition to with a counselor, a new life counselor to help you start walking through this. That's right. Randy, hold on. You can hear the music. We're going to go to a break. I'm going to have Alice respond to your uh, concern. It is, it is a struggle when we get in these places where it just feels like everything's overwhelming. But we want to encourage you that there is hope and there is help. 
and uh, we'll get you connected as well. I, I, it's, it's not impossible, it's just not yet. We'll be right back after this break. Restore gave me strength. It gave me more belief in my faith. I met up with a group of women that are going through things that they had no control over. If you've been affected by betrayal, an emotional or physical affair or pornography, the Restore Intensive will equip you with support and tools to help you through. When two people want to do their part, we can be restored. But if they don't, we can still be restored. We are not stuck because someone else made a decision that God lets us weigh in on how we want to walk out our lives. Our wellness does not hinge on another person's Decision. The Restore Intensive is coming to Washington, D.C., November 1st through the 3rd. Register online at newlife.com or call 1 800 New Life and use the discount code NLL to save $50. I had a great experience at Restore. 1 800 N E W L I F E and the discount code NLL. Club New Life changes lives. I think I go way back to listening to New Life, learning so much from it, and then become a Club New Life member. Club New Life is a monthly giving family that helps New Life Ministries provide Christ-centered hope and counseling resources to thousands of people. You know, I'm so thankful because you know why I keep giving? Because I keep learning and I'm so thankful for all the lives that you touch every day and the people's mm -hmm. lives. So when I get to still hear the radio show, it's just so encouraging to my heart. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, you'll make a difference in the lives of individuals and families with godly counsel and connection to help. And you know one reason I give? Because I feel like sometimes I'm hiding behind a counselor's couch listening to all this great information and not paying. So my guilt of this great advice is alleviated by being a Club New Life member. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433. And together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. We are taking calls at 1-800-229-3000. Right now, we are talking with Randy, who is in a very low spot um, in business and in his life and just feeling a lot of that pain. Alice, I wanted to give you an opportunity to speak with him. Randy, when we can't trust God and it's hard to be close to him, it's usually because people in our life have not been trustworthy. And so if you take us up on this idea of pursuing deeper counseling work, I think a primary focus for you will be identifying and processing through the stories of the people who left you, the people who didn't support you or love you as you needed to be. And so often that stretches all the way back to parents in our childhood. Um, but from the little that you said, I suspect that many people left you if you weren't financially um, providing for them or active in your work. And so please consider that it's a tough question to ask and it makes getting into uh, the kind of work we're describing that much more difficult because you can't trust people. But you have to get in with substantially trustworthy people starting with professionals in order to figure out how to learn whether or not people are safe to trust. And that almost miraculously changes our view of God over time when we get the healing in relationship with other humans. What do you think of that, Randy? To me, unless God gets me what I want, then he's not on my side. He's not a friend. I can't know him. And to give you some background, yeah, you're right. Two people have left me. They died. One, both died. And, um, and I thought, well, but I counted on those people. And now you've taken them. And um, how could you do that to me? Um, and so um, business has changed, and I don't really know if I'm coming or going. Uh, and um, um, I've been with a, a spiritual person who, were, who, were, who was at a church, a spirit, two spiritual people. And I think that they were too young to realize, wait a minute, wait, this person, meaning Randy, 
is putting all of his stock into in, 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 into my helping him and, and, and coming around for him. And they just, they w- were not mature enough to see that, that you're dealing with a sensitive mm-hmm. person that wants to serve God and wants to be in God, mm-hmm. but now you're just saying, well, I don't have the time to do that. And um, mm-hmm. they're looking for ways to, the, the the one of them was um, looking to way or for ways to get out of it, and his whole dealy, which because I'm I'm it, it's painful to talk about it, except yeah. that for my background, but all of these people are emphasizing being saved, and I mm-hmm. am not trained. In, in that at all. I wasn't even even trained in knowing that I'm a sinner. Mm. Th- that was just mm. not part of my training for, for me. Um, so I might as well. So you know what, though, what? Randy, here's, here's what I want you to consider. I want you to consider that it may need to be a different type of person, which is what we talked about before, but then there's going to be grief that comes in with the people that couldn't help you before. There's a disappointment. There's uh, the people that leave. There's the grief that goes with that. And I also believe in the power of group and to begin the process of being curious about what is it that I need. And I want to just go back to what um, both Alice and Stacy said. Sometimes there is a professional um, observation that needs to be had, whether it is because you may be suffering with clinical depression. It could be because of the inability for some people to be able to help you. I mean, it it happens, but I don't want you to give up at this point. We're gonna connect you with um, a therapist in your area and perhaps even being part of a life recovery group. And, um, you know, just in that process of grieving, the losses of people and to be able to express that with people who can hear you can be part of that journey. We're so grateful that you called Randy. I'm gonna send you a copy of Changes That Heal, which is a great um, instruction manual, literally, on um, the things that we can do in order in these difficult places that we find ourselves. We're so grateful that you called. We are going to go and we're going to talk with Esther, who's calling us from Los Angeles, California. She listens to us on YouTube, and we're grateful for our YouTube audience. If you're there, please like and subscribe. It helps get the word out to so many people. Esther, how can we help you today? Hi, how are you? Doing well. Glad to hear from you. What's on your mind? Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, um, I just, okay, like, I have been wondering about this for the longest time, but the I was reading David Diga Hernandez's book, The Holy Spirit Bondage Breaker, and mm-hmm. when I was reading this book, he said it's not normal for the Christian to be in bondage and live a life of freedom at the same time unbondaged to sin and live a life of freedom so he says that the holy spirit is the tool or the not the tool but the person of the holy spirit is that the the like magic weapon that we have as believers to break all bondages to addiction to fear to emotional trauma especially emotional trauma um because that's the emotional baggage we carry from relationships can kind of like change our thinking that when we go to like, because since I'm, since I'm a born again believer this year, I've been in, I've, I've been being set free from trauma through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm wondering like, do you believe that the Holy Spirit can do all things like break someone free in one moment from addiction to let's say pornography, to lust, to drugs, to alcohol, or do some people need also counseling out like from demons or stuff like that? What do you feel? Mm-hmm. What a great question, mm-hmm. Esther. I love that you asked that question. Alice, how would you like to start? Esther, I have known many people who um, have experienced a miraculous break from addiction and that from one day to another they were able to leave behind uh, years even decades of sexual immorality addiction to a substance although i've heard multiple stories and i believe them i know these people personally 
it tends to be the minority of the general population that that happens for, that miraculous release. Most of us have to go through a prolonged sanctification process that needs to involve other people helping us, teaching us, and um, showing us how to come out of the different areas in which we're in bondage. And even those people that have the miraculous release from an addictive behavior still need character growth. And that also only happens in relationship and over time. So would you tell us, Esther, in what area of life is there still bondage and you wish the Holy Spirit would miraculously free you from it, if that's what you're referring to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's because, like, um, I've been under, like, some people, like, it's the the bondage that I am, like, I'm not living under bondage right now, but I believe I'm getting attacked from the outside because I believe, like, the attacks are coming from the outside, not the inside, because when you're in bondage, the my pastor david says you when you're in bondage it's coming from the inside instead of the outside so i do believe the attacks are coming from the outside because i'm still i'm still living under the same household as my as my my significant other that that i was with so that's why i believe the attacks are stemming from that like the emotional attachment um is still there as much as i okay. the full time might still be there and I, I want to com- I want to completely break that full tie in Jesus' name. So okay, um, well, just and so that I can- Esther, oh, yeah. Esther, going back to what Alice just said, sometimes it is an instant or it is a firm line, but then there's a lot of other stuff that goes along with that. It it would be so great if it was just one thing and then it would all be good, but it's it's a little bit more complex. <clears throat> Stacy, can you speak to that complexity? Yeah, I think that um, hearing about the few people who have been miraculously freed um, can be really frustrating for people (laughs) who it takes a process, you know, Um, and I wouldn't want anybody to spiritualize and say, you know, it's just sin, you should just believe, you should just trust the Holy Spirit, because sometimes it is just not that simple. It is a complex process. layered thing having to do with family of origin trauma um, how we were attuned to as children what our attachments have been throughout life Um, there are so many layers of complexity that go to why people do what they do and why people struggle with certain things could be trauma Um, there are so many layers of that that um, I believe that the Holy Spirit, the way he worked through my life was sending me to people who could help me untangle mm-hmm. that because I could That's not right. pray it away. The Holy Spirit That's didn't right. just show up and zap me from the things that were wrong. People helped me see those things and the Holy Spirit enabled that. That's right. We'll be right back after this. We all face days where life throws us a curveball and our routines or plans get disrupted. Things we wanted to do are forced to take a backseat to the unexpected demands of the day. If you normally listen to New Life Live on a radio station, well, you might not be able to that day. And on these hectic days when you're feeling stressed or frazzled, hearing the sound of counsel given on New Life Live is just what you need to navigate the unexpected things of life. Every time I'm troubled or I have a problem, I'll cut on New Life. And there's always always something that is said that is helpful to me. By listening, I have learned more than I can ever express about how God wants me to live. Download the New Life app for the easiest way to listen wherever you are and at a time that's convenient for you. Or watch the show on our YouTube channel. You can even subscribe to our podcast from your favorite podcast provider. You never have to miss a day of New Life. Wherever you are, we are. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for over 34 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for your life and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today, living the life God intended for you. Help is available 
at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care, and they did follow up very lovingly, and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow. Call 1-800-639-5433. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. Welcome back. We're so grateful that you have joined us today. And, you know, I just want to say a big shout out to those of you who are financially supporting New Life. You are making a difference in the lives of so many people. I know you hear me say that, but I can't say it enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you have not yet given to New Life, why not today? You can go to newlife.com forward slash donate. And we appreciate any amount, but we also appreciate those of you who want to be part of our Club New Life family. When you join Club New Life, you give on a monthly basis and it helps support everything that the ministry is doing to help people find transformation in their life. It is biblical based counseling that we we are giving to so many people. We're, we're letting people know that there is help and hope in their life and we want to continue to do this and we do this because of your generosity and god working through the gifts that you are giving so if you haven't yet given maybe today is the day i won't even say maybe i'll say today is your day (laughs) go to Mm newlife.com forward slash donate or call us at 1-800 new life and donate you will make a difference in someone's life and it may be even your own we're going to go back to the callers and um by the way i'm going to send esther a copy of Healing is a Choice by Steve Arterburn. I think that will be so impactful in her journey. We're going to talk with Katie, who's calling us from Denton, Texas. Listens on KWRD. Hello, Katie. Thanks for calling. How can we help you today? Hello. You guys have helped me tremendously in my marriage. And thankfully, my husband is not addicted to porn and alcohol and whatever else anymore. But he's not done any emotional work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's great, but it's been over, it's been like 17 years of dealing with somebody who has a very low emotional intelligence level, and I'm an empath, and it just, I'm to the point because he doesn't want to go to therapy to fix the rest of the story, you know, like the emotional outburst, Mm -hmm. getting angry over, like he has some anger issues, like frustration that when things he can't control or when our children don't listen and then he just looks to me as like okay you take care of it and i'm also the Mm. provider so i feel like i'm playing the man role in the marriage and i always have been and honestly like it's making me lose like i feel numb now and that's a scary place for me to be Mm -hmm. because Mm. it was hurt for a long time then it was anger and i've asked him for two years to please get back into therapy and get with someone specifically that can help you deal with your childhood traumas or whatever is causing these, you know, these just outbursts and this negative, this just general negativity that surrounds him mm. um, when, when things don't go his way. And he's not doing it. And I'm just to the point where I'm shut off now. Like, I don't want anything to do with him because it, it's, mm. it, it's causing physical effects on my body now. Like, the emotional right. trauma is causing my autoimmune stuff to to flare and so now i i just have to step back and i go in my room at night after work and i mean we work for joel but there's no intimacy i don't even want to be intimate with him all there's, right well katie just no connection we hear how hard it is we've only got a few minutes but i want to start stacy go ahead and you start and then we'll hear from alice but this is a desperate situation yeah, Katie, my heart goes out to you because I know you want love and connection and everything that you've done to get it, it, it seems like you're powerless and not able to get it. And these are very, very hard marriages to be in. Um, but I love how you were saying, look, this isn't okay with me. I don't want to be shut down anymore. I don't want this to, to be this way anymore. I don't like how I'm being affected by this. So what that means is when you live in a situation like this, it's really important that you have good boundaries for yourself. So what that means is, like, what is it I need to be calm, at peace, and enjoy my life? Um, Again, living with someone, I always say if you're close to a toxic waste dump, you're going to get effects of the toxin. 
So it, it's hard to be in a relationship that is draining and negative and where there's anger and you feel helpless and powerless to do anything. But I want to say that you do have choices. And so it comes down to what it is that you need for yourself. And so you might have to put some teeth in that boundary of, you know, things are going to change around here or, um, you know, uh, even an in-house separation or out-of-house separation is not what you want, but that you're very serious. Sometimes a separation can cause, bring attention to the seriousness of a matter, like because it's not worthy of um, of the of the name. The I was going to say the Smith name, but that's my name now. But you know the Jones <laughs> name to not set the boundary to say, hey, this isn't God's best for our relationship, mm-hmm. or at least for us to find out what in the world is going on here because you don't want to live life numb. There is a way to detach from the relationship and not be numb, but you're going to feel it. You're going to feel the pain of it. You want a relationship that is reciprocal, that has interactive uh, regulation where you're both working toward it. And I would just say to you, don't give up on wanting that Mm -hmm. and needing that and and actually demanding that in your relationship because you know what's possible. Right. Um, Right. You also can set boundaries around. It's not okay to be around the children when you're angry like that. Um, And I just love that you're looking at your resentment and to say, maybe, you know, I don't want to continue being the provider anymore. Um, and then get help to understand what's out there to help people that have a low EQ. Again, like I told the last caller, it could be a lot of things out there that are or a couple callers ago. It could be an OCPD. Um, it could be um, trauma. There's a lot of things, but to invite him into a process right, like that right. to change. And yeah, and Katie, he doesn't even know how good the help is that you're asking him to get like he will be impacted in a positive way alice how about you get the last word on this Mm -hmm. one katie it makes me think that a man of wrath must face consequences if not you'll have to you got it you know it well and so stacy is teaching you or reminding you perhaps how to allow those consequences to start to happen so i want to give you some potential wording it is noble it's admirable that your husband is no longer using Um, But it sounds like he's a dry drunk. He's not using, but he hasn't done the character work. So I'd have you remind him, I'm so grateful that you're sober. I appreciate it. We need that. But my love feels like it's drying up and I don't want us to become roommates. And that is where we are headed. So I need you to rethink your no to therapy. And uh, I can't get close to you unless you're willing to get professional and structured help. I don't want to have to go this route, but if you won't get help, I'll have to start withdrawing my heart to protect it. And then Katie, think about building up joy with other women outside of the home because you need to be fueled somehow. Otherwise you're too depleted, especially as a mom. Yeah. And you know what, Katie, here's what I want you to do. I want you guys to come to our Intimacy and Marriage Intensive. We're going to be in Dallas um, October 25th uh, when we, we're getting ready to be done with this show, but we'll get you connected with the information there. Here's the thing. He doesn't know what he needs. His, his anger, his woundedness, all of the reactions that you're seeing is just this innate reaction because of the wounds that he has. It's not at you, it is feeling like it's at you, but it's because he's in such a painful place. It's like you said, Alice, it's great, he's not using, but what are we gonna do with the wound that's behind that mm-hmm. that um, addiction? So I wanna invite you guys to be there. We're gonna send you a copy of How We Love as well. and. We're grateful that you called and um, hopefully I'll see you there. Um, You know, as we close out this um, show, we're grateful for all of our callers. Um, Please continue to stay in touch with us. You are making a difference by being engaged with us because we know that you're reaching out to somebody else. And we hope that in some way, what you learn here will be helpful. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Alice. And thank you, listeners. If you need more, call us 1-800-NEW-LIFE or go to newlife.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. 
to make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again on Monday for New Life Live. Thanks for watching today. We love helping people. I hope you sense that. And we know that there's always hope if you find the right resource. Now, if something we've said that somebody else applies to you, that's fantastic. That's what we're hoping for. But also, if you want to join us directly, you can call 1-800-229-3000 between 1 and 3 Eastern Time, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Those are the best times to get through. And while you're here on YouTube, Check out these other videos that we've done to help people see where they could grow or a different path to take. And if you do that, would you give us a thumbs up on the video and please subscribe to this channel. There are many ways that we can help you outside of the radio program, and it's very hard for some to pick up a phone and dial 1-800-NEW-LIFE, but when you do, we put you in touch with somebody who cares about you, knows all the resources out there, and they're going to find the best for you. There is no reason to struggle alone. I hope to see you tomorrow. Hope you'll invite somebody else to come and join that maybe needs just a little bit of help along the way. I'll see you next time.